everyone. Uh, I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to speak at the Open Source Summit Europe. Uh, many of you are old friends of Open Forum Europe, and I have known you for years. Um, yet I believe this is the first time that I'm ever presenting at a Linux Foundation event. So really happy to, to be here with you. Um, being here really represents a conscious strategic shift uh, in our organization and the way we communicate. Um, as the leading think tank promoting openness in IT in Brussels, uh, we've been talking to policymakers for, for over 15 years, uh, trying to convince them to take open source seriously. Um, but today I'm here to make the case to you rather that it's, it's time for the open source community to, to take public policy more seriously um, and argue that uh, the time to do so is now. Um, but first, uh, perhaps you'll allow me to indulge in a, in a personal story um, to illustrate how far we've come also with open source in, in Brussels. Um, 12 years ago, I had just started working with Open Forum Europe um, and um, with some colleagues, I had registered to participate in an event organized by, by the European Commission uh, on standardization, I believe. Um, and we were told uh, informally that the organizers had asked for extra security uh, because the open source people were attending. And uh, we were seen as, as dangerous uh, first and probably last uh, for, for me personally. Um, anyway, fast forward to last week, uh, and uh, the Commission has just published um, a communication that outlines its, uh, its new open source uh, strategy. Uh, it's a bold document that not only recognizes the role of open source um, in underpinning uh, most of the technology uh, today, uh, but also fully embracing it and, and, and uh, spells out the role of open source and openness in achieving uh, the twin transformations towards uh, a green and digital Europe. So I, I urge you all to read it uh, because it's really uh, a bold uh, document. Um, and, but where does this leave us? Uh, the open source development model now runs the show. Uh, we have a European Commission that's committed to, um, to the openness of, uh, to the importance of open source uh, for Europe's digital future. Uh, is the job done? Can we can we all go home? No, it's um, it's it's really now that open source is is big. Um, it's everywhere that that the real political challenges uh, emerge, and um, it's when your code is fundamental to um, to the technologies that build our societies that you have new responsibilities um, to help solve the large challenges that society faces and pol policymakers are expecting you uh, to, to step up. Um, and I prefer to put it like this in a positive call for action, uh, but actually uh, change is coming, whether you like it or not, and, and really whether you get engaged or not. Um, Governments everywhere and in Europe um, are, are stepping in to regulate the tech space um, in the coming years, and they have reason to. Um, in Brussels right now, big pieces of legislation are, are being prepared in order to hold platforms responsible, to regulate AI uh, and how data is handled, and even to create a new industrial strategy based on the digital transformation. And that's just to name a few. Um, and Really, all these policy efforts will impact open source in different ways. Um, open source may not be the direct target for regulation, but by being everywhere, by winning as open source ha has done, uh, it will inadvertently at least get affected. And so uh, these efforts, um, where do they come from? Um, why, why is this happening now? Well. I think that in, in large part, they stem from, from an increased uh, geopolitical tension. Uh, there, there is a sense of urgency coming from the impression that Europe is not autonomous, it's not resilient, or as some like to put it, it's not sovereign. And indeed, uh, this concept of, of digital sovereignty is, is really being heard a lot in the tech policy discussions right now um, and is seen as, as, a, as, a, as an impetus for action. Um, it's, not, it's not new. Uh, Europe's autonomy has been a political concern for, 
for decades, but um, the way it's it's currently defined in the context of, of EU policy, I think was introduced by uh, by Emmanuel Macron in his Sorbonne, Sorbonne speech in, in September 2017 and has since come to underpin a lot of uh, the digital policy discussions that are going on right now. Um, but if we go if we go beyond this the, the buzzword the current buzzword what does this digital sovereignty mean in practice and 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 why is this both a challenge and an opportunity for the open source uh, community um, I believe that that it's it comes down to a sense of control uh, control of our infrastructure um, especially the parts that are considered um, as critical to core functions of our society. And, and as we know, open source is there, running large parts of it. And the sense of, of control, in my view, there are, there are two paths uh, to achieving it. The first is one where we make our world smaller in order to feel that we are in charge. For example, uh, develop European standards with only European stakeholders or buying only from European based companies. Um, the second, however, is control through openness. Uh, looking at it from a software perspective, this means having access to, to the code, uh, being able to choose uh, and change vendors, uh, voiding lock-in, uh, you know all of this. Um, and if we bring that concept um, to the geopolitical, geopolitical level, uh, you can see that the same messages of control through openness have the potential to resonate well in an unstable world. Um, if politicians choose the, the first path, however, and there is risk of this, I, I'm convinced that we might get a sense of control not actual control and innovation and knowledge exchange um, will suffer and by extension open source in europe will suffer so um, looking at open source from a geopolitical perspective i see that we can help solve this challenge of control without making our world smaller um, so what is it that we're talking about when we are uh, when open source when we say that open source can help us get more control and why is it so crucial now uh, it's worth repeating consider now the old story of, of lock-in of our desktop environments um, that was the big fight uh, that's the time when i got uh, got involved first in open source um, this challenge of lock-in when we are uh, digitizing all aspects of society uh, be it in healthcare, agriculture, smart cities. Um, how can we help digitize our societies in a global world at the technological forefront without losing control? Um, I think the open source model and open technologies have a major role to play here. Um, avoiding lock-in, uh, the classic advocacy fight of open source is now geopolitical. Um, this challenge, I think, is of uh, way greater magnitude um, than those of earlier earlier political fights uh, open source advocates have engaged in. Um, um, and I include myself there. Um, so where are we? Um, open source might have won in the marketplace, but in order to step up and meet today's challenges, we have to sort out some of our limiting beliefs. Um, the first is an internal belief, I believe, among members of the open source community. And again, I include myself here. Uh, there is still a notion of being the challengers, the underdog, uh, the disruptors. Well, open source is now everywhere, including in public services, underpinning uh, e-government services. Um, with that comes challenges and responsibilities. It means you are the establishment. When you are big, that's when you need to start talking uh, to policymakers and to take policymaking and regulation seriously. And here, paradoxically, I think we are up against another limiting belief. Um, and 
notwithstanding the excellent open source strategy of the European uh, Commission, uh, let's keep in mind that there are, I would say, three general groups among public officials when it comes to open source. The first is uh, sort of the open source believers. They are excited about the possibilities uh, um, I outlined earlier. Then there is the old guard, um, if I can call it that, which is still strong, that looks at open source with suspicion, uh, are concerned that it is not secure and just uh, a cheaper alternative. And finally, we have really the biggest group, those who never think about open source. Uh, it's never been on their radar, or maybe they have a general feeling that it has something to do with um, with the hackers, with hackers in basements, nothing wrong with that. Um, and so paradoxically, I think we are everywhere and experts know this, but the vast majority in the public sector are not aware. They see open source as something niche um, at best, I would say. And uh, important, I think, to note is that not being thought of is sometimes something good, uh, but when governments look to regulate the tech space, being unknown can be dangerous or at least have uh, serious consequences. I'll tell you another short story to illustrate this. Um, a couple of years ago, um, the commission published uh, a communication on, on uh, standards and, and patents. And when we asked or rather complained about the fact that uh, there was no mention of royalty free licensing, no mention of open source and how it's impacted, um, the answer from the European Commission was simply not a single open source company had come to them and asked to have a conversation um, or filled out uh, the consultation document. And so think about this. Um, not a single party had come, not a single stakeholder had come to talk to them about this. And so being part of the political discussion um, had implications then, and I think will have serious uh, implications in the future if we don't engage. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, I think today we have uh, actually a real opportunity to engage and to be proactive when it comes to engaging with, with policymakers. And uh, last week, as I mentioned, um, the European Commission published this, this document, um, its latest open source strategy, um, a very ambitious document. And, um, stating that open source uh, plays an important role in the digital uh, autonomy of Europe, um, saying also that open source can, can give Europe um, a chance to create and maintain its own independent digital approach and, and stay in control of its processes, um, its information and, and its technology. So, uh, what does uh, what does the Commission want uh, with these uh, with these efforts and these statements? And I believe we we were told um, openly what they want um, by Pierce O'Donoghue, a director at DigiConnect. Uh, he spoke at OFE's Open Source Policy Summit um, in February this year. Um, uh, the Commission challenges open source uh, as a community of stakeholders to show them what open source can do for society and for Europe. And um, they are reaching out to, to you, to us, the open source community to engage. Um, they have already taken the first step and really now it's time for, for us to level up. Um, yeah, um, and so where to start? Um, Right now, there is um, the easiest way for you to engage, I would say, uh, in the policy conversation uh, is to take part in, in this, in this uh, European Commission's study on uh, the impact of open source software and hardware. Um, it's uh, actually being um, carried out by Open Forum Europe uh, together with uh, Fraunhofer. 
uh, this study is meant to guide open source policy for the next 10 years. I believe um, it will go beyond uh, policy statements and, and strategy documents and will impact funding, investments and procurement. So it's really important. Um, we are conducting a, a big survey um, as part of this study of open source companies, projects and organizations um, with an aim of, you know, to capture uh, the real face of open source uh, as it is today within companies and both um, small one person ventures and tech giants. Um, uh, we want to hear from, from all of you. So uh, go to our website or the commission's website and you'll find the links. Um, where to start if you run an open source business. Um, there are many uh, ways that you can get involved um, and engaged as a stakeholder. Just, just this week, uh, European Open Source Business Association is formally launching in Brussels. It's called APEL, Association Professionnelle Européenne de Logiciel Libre. Uh, it aims to be the voice of open source businesses vis-à-vis uh, -vis the European institutions. I think it's a it's a milestone really for open source to be represented as a as a stakeholder uh, in Brussels. Um, so, if you um, are you a supporting member of a national business association uh, for open source, um, are you encouraging them to engage at the European level? Um, remember what I mentioned about the. The standards and, and patents communication uh, a few years back, uh, there was no open source company that had spoken to the European Commission. And that's how you get inadvertently affected by, by, by policy. Uh, today, I think the situation has improved somewhat, um, but the level of resources of the European open source business associations are nowhere near where they should be when taking their real world importance into account. Other industries uh, put way more effort into European representation. Um, and you can tell yourself that you won. It's the government's responsibility to understand the importance of open source and just sit back and wait for them to call us for our opinion. But um, you can also take responsibility for the situation and, and start, or start the conversation, uh, build, build that bridge. Uh, remember, uh, open source, uh, the community that you're all part of, uh, has the capacity, I think, to help solve some of Europe's large strategic challenges. Um, and uh, it's, not, it's not only open source, uh, you know, this is not unique to open source. It usually takes a crisis or an immediate threat for, for smaller industries to react to political risks or opportunities. Um, you know, the big ones are at the table already. The, the, the establishment is there. Um, but, but open source is not small anymore. Uh, it can sometimes look small in the eyes of the policymakers or look niche. Uh, we have to step up uh, and, um, and, and, and improve the communication, uh, educate policymakers. And uh, that's why I'm now turning to you here at the Open Source Summit Europe. Join us in our conversation with policymakers. Um, don't wait for an existential threat. Uh, show policymakers how openness can solve their problems. Um, thank you and uh, stay in touch. Mm -hmm.